implementation process. FMEA is a simple way of predicting what might go wrong. A series of sequential steps is used in the FMEA process. Step 1. Defining the topic. Step 2. Assembling a committed team. Step 3. Developing a process map. Step 4. Conducting a risk or hazard analysis for each sub-process. Step 5. Developing and implementing an action plan to redesign the process. Step 6. Monitoring, sustaining, sharing, and re-evaluating the improvement. A hospital performs an FMEA process to minimize risk of errors in prescribing and managing drugs in pediatric department. Team was trained to analyze the drug delivery process, to identify possible causes of failures and their potential effects, to calculate a risk priority number for each failure and plan changes in practices. We need to minimize risk of errors in prescribing and managing drugs in pediatric wards. For this matter, we have decided to implement FMEA in order to examine the hazards associated with the process of drugs delivery to children. For this, we also need to train our staff and doctors to analyze the drug delivery process to identify possible causes of failures and their potential effects. But what would be the outcome after implementing FMEA process in the department? The primary outcome is to identify higher priority potential failure modes as defined by RPN and to plan changes in clinical practice to reduce the risk of patients' harm and improve safety in the process of medication use for children. Alright, let's start the process immediately. In all, 37 higher priority potential failure modes and 71 associated causes and effects were identified. The highest RPN related greater than 48 mainly to errors in calculating drugs doses and concentrations. These failure modes suggest the presence of common target for improvement, particularly in enhancing the safety of prescription and preparation of endovenous drugs. The introductions of new activities in the revised process of administering drugs allowed reducing the high risk failure modes of 60%. Sir, really FMEA is an effective proactive risk assessment tool useful to aid multidisciplinary groups in understanding a process care and identifying error that may occur prioritizing remedial interventions and possibly enhancing the safety of drugs delivery in children. Good work done. A successful FMEA activity has helped the team to identify potential failure modes based on past experience with similar products or processes. Step 1. Defining the topic. Depending on the purpose of the analysis, a topic selected for investigation might be a response to a sentinel event or even a near miss that occurred. Alternatively, other tools such as safety and environmental walkabouts, error reporting and even customer complaints may highlight opportunities for analysis. The topic should be chosen on the basis of data collected for quality assurance and audit as well as performance problems. Step 2. Assembling a committed team. The team should be committed to identifying opportunities for improvement and to implementing and championing change. Team members must be allocated sufficient time and resources to allow the process to be successful because FMEA is both time and resource intensive. Assembling a committed team. When FMEA is being applied for continuous improvement, the team is responsible for identifying what process, systems or procedures can be improved. A team leader or facilitator should be chosen who is familiar with and skilled in teamwork and team building. This team leader plays a vital role in facilitating the process. He or she explains the various steps in the FMEA process controls the progress of the analysis and assists the team in applying a systems approach when identifying failure mode causes and outlining appropriate actions. The team leader should be familiar with the 
FMEA process and it is advisable for a team leader to attend a practice session elsewhere or a workshop if he or she has not previously done so. Toolkits provided by the Joint Commission and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs National Center for Patient Safety as well as the FMEA Pocket Handbook are also useful resources for the facilitator and other team members. A recorder should also be appointed to document assigned roles and progress. The role of each person on the team should be clearly outlined. To the extent that it is possible, the team should be multidisciplinary, both representative and inclusive. The members of the team should have expertise in the subject matter being investigated. Be sure to include everyone who is involved at any point in the process. Some people may not need to be part of the team throughout the entire analysis, but they should certainly be included in discussions of those steps in the process in which they are involved. Developing a process map. A detailed chart of the process should be constructed by the team, thus enabling complete understanding of the individual steps that are involved in the process. This understanding can be achieved by constructing a process map, which visually depicts the sequence of related events in the process. A process map is different from a flow chart, which simply displays the process flow graphically by showing inputs, outputs and units of activity as well as decision or action points. The process map is a hierarchical means for illustrating complex processes and includes additional attributes such as cycle time and delays between stages, responsible persons, inventory, the value or cost added at each step and wastage. Number every step of the process and be as specific as possible. It may take several meetings for the team to complete this part of the FMEA, depending on the number of steps and the complexity of the process. The details of each process and sub-process should be accurate and comprehensive. When you are finished, be sure to obtain consensus from the group. The team should agree that the steps enumerated in the FMEA accurately describe the process. Narrowing the scope of the analysis is important because too broad an approach will result in a lengthy process. Too narrow a scope is unlikely to result in meaningful effects. To establish an environment for a successful outcome, the team should focus on those steps that are most amenable to intervention and improvement. The process map would identify sub-processes in which failures can occur. These sub-processes are then analyzed to determine which are most likely to have an impact on patient throughout. Step 3. Developing a process map. A process map visually depicts the sequence of related events in the process. This enables complete understanding of the individual steps. Narrowing the scope of the analysis is important because too broad an approach will result in a lengthy process. Too narrow a scope is unlikely to result in meaningful effects. The process map would identify sub-processes in which failures can occur. These sub-processes are then analyzed. Step 4. Conducting a risk or hazard analysis for each sub-process. Different ways in which the subprocess can fail should be determined, that is, identification of the failure modes. Not every failure mode will result in harm to a patient, but the impacts of a failure may manifest as procedural delays, equipment breakdowns, reductions in patient throughput, and numerous other factors affecting patient care and customer service. The higher the ranking on a scale of 1 to 10, 
the more severe is the effect of a potential failure mode. In determining the probability of a failure mode occurring, reference should be made to the data from previous adverse events and to the personal experience of the team members. The higher the ranking on scale of 1 to 10, the more likely it is for the failure mode to occur. Next, the team focuses on the probability that a failure mode will be detected. The higher the ranking on a scale of 1 to 10, the less likely it is that a failure mode will be detected. Risk Priority Number The risk priority number is also referred as the critical index. It is a quantitative measure used to evaluate and assess a failure mode. The RPNs are the ranked to allow prioritization of the failure modes and to highlight the failure modes that exceed acceptable limits and should therefore be targeted for change. Let's watch the video lecture which will give you more information about conducting a risk or hazard analysis.